talk to you about all things uh, digital marketing from Google. Kiddo. Good morning, guys. You can come closer if you want to. When you get bored, just say, let's move. So I'm Chris. Um, I come from Google. I work in the uh, marketing solutions team based in London, and I work with uh, partners that are working, well, reselling our product, let's say, and supporting smaller advertisers or smaller businesses that are trying to make their first steps online. Um, so my name is Chris Ante, but call me Chris is a lot easier. Um, so today we'll look into um, how, let's say, how the, the digital ecosystem has changed a little bit and how the behavior of your consumers is changing as well. Um, we'll start with uh, more general across, uh, the across different industries and then we'll focus more on B2B and specifically how is the, the market going for specific uh, industries that you're operating. So this is a, a, an image that you have probably seen from like old magazines or um, um, ads. And that's a typical living room in the 50s, probably even in the 90s, one TV and everyone around. Uh, and this is the current situation. I guess you, you might have this already in your house. Um, and the, the first thing that pops out is choice. Everyone is able to see whatever they want, whenever they want. Uh, a bit too annoying as we were discussing earlier, Maybe we don't communicate much, but this is reality. So instead of trying to fight against it, let's see how we can embrace it and work through it. So obviously our media consumption has changed a lot. We used to have a TV, we used to have one phone. Now most of us have multiple devices with us and we are all the time connected. So we have uh, access to any content, anytime, any screen. What we see is that um, there is no free time anymore. So, you know, we used to be uh, like wait, let's say at the bus stop or uh, wait at a queue or on, on the bus. We had some free time doing that reading or uh, just really chilling and not using our brain. There's no free time anymore because we are connected throughout. Um, so just a little bit of stats there. Uh, this is a survey that is available from your market here, so you can find it as well if you want. Um, and this is back in 2011. The TV was still the, the main media um, where we're consuming, uh, let's say when we're getting informed and, or entertained. And digital was only, this is um, the, the hours per day. Um, so 2.25, three hours, radio and print, uh, obviously the smaller um, distribution there. Now let's see what happened in 2015. Only about four years after, and digital, the time that we spent on digital doubled. TV dropped a little bit and we saw like small changes as well in radio and print. So that was in 2015, we're, in, we're almost in 2017. This time now is, uh, has increased even further, it's closer to, four, to, to 5.3, uh, something like that. So in order to wake us up a little bit, I'm just gonna put a video on quickly on the connectivity and how we are, we don't, let's say, sound. Maybe not. Do we have, do we have sound? Mm, if this is fully on. Ah, okay, there you go. Sorry, technical issues. You would think that Google would have happened. Um, okay.
So there you go. Clearly, we don't get online anymore. We just live online. It might sound a bit disturbing, I'd say, that we live online, but it's true. Um, we don't have online sessions anymore. We simply because we are connected throughout. Uh, we, millions of people, billions of people around the world are connected daily and living across multiple devices and across multiple screens. Um, so, as I said, we don't have this free time. We we are we are always connected, always on. So we live online. Um, so we were discussing earlier again um, how many devices we're using. Most of you have heard already. 3.3 connected devices per person. This is where we stand um, at the moment. So every person, let's say, well, because a lot of us have a lot more, right? Like the younger generations have a lot more than three. They have their iWatch, they have their, um, or their smartwatch. I shouldn't say iWatch, should I? Um, they have their um, multiple phones, computers, tablets. We saw the first picture um, of, the car, of the modern um, living room. So this is where we are. And that has led to something that is called nomophobia. I don't know if you've heard about it, but because we, we are actually connected throughout, throughout the time that we don't have reception, the time we, we're running out of battery or we just forgot our phone, we start having the no mobile phobia, which is obviously a new term, but has been created because it, it, it is real, it exists. Um, so According to the recent, to the most recent study, we are checking our phone 150 times a day, and this is without. This, this is not for people that use their phone for a watch. So for those that don't have a watch and uh, have their phone as a clock or a watch, it is a lot more. So now take a minute and, and think 150 times a day. That could be, imagine the number of opportunities that is out there for businesses like yours or. Um, like small advertisers, small businesses that want to put their product out there and reach their target audience. All these 150 times are opportunities for a business to, to, to reach their target. So what is important is that no matter what device the user is on, we need to be there. Um, either through an ad or through a very strong website that is doing very well in organic, whatever it is. We need to make sure that your online presence is very strong. You have a website that has good content and it's easy to, for a user to find the information that they're looking for. So you would say, okay, Chris, enough with the generic stuff. Let's just look into B2B. What's happening in our market? Is it the same? We understand that retail is growing on mobile and everyone is, uh, is reading a lot online, but is mobile users really valuable for us? Is it happening a lot? And um, how can, can we actually turn them into business? So, Every once, in, every once in a while, Google runs um, a survey with, uh, we, we partner with a big research uh, company, and in 2014, it was the last one that we ran, which was called B2B Fast Purchase. And what we did is, we, it ran for two years, and we monitored the performance, the, the behavior of um, consumers for B2B. So we had a massive panel of, uh, of three million people, I think, and um, different buyers, um, different buyers, different age groups, in order to see how, how this is evolving. So the, the biggest number that came out is 90% of B2B purchasers use search specifically to do their research. Now what's interesting is that when we started the survey in 2012, it was the same number. We still had 90% of B2B um, potential buyers searching online, starting their search online. Two years after, it was still 9%. So we didn't see a big change in the, in the number of people that uh, were searching online. The number of people was pretty much the same. However, what was different was the intensity of their search. So what happened is that the users within th these two years were researching a lot more intensively. They would do a lot more research, they would um, do a lot more searches than before. So as you can see here, a typical user, user would take up to 12 different searches in order to get to the first stage of engagement. Let's say to start making a decision and filtering out um, the bad, let's say, the, the companies that they wouldn't work with or the products that they're not interested in. And it would take 12 um, engagements, 12 searches. This is a very committed user, someone that really wants to find, to find the information. And it's instant, they can find it, this could happen within a week, whereas before, they find 12 different, like 12 different businesses or 
five different products would take a lot longer. So now let's look a little bit into your your business, your your industry. Um, so as I said, the, the number of people that are searching is exactly the same, but the intensity of the searches is a lot is a lot higher. And this is also reflecting in your industry. So the percentages that you see here are the uh, the growth in the number of searches that have been happening year on year. So this is um, since last year, basically. I ran the report literally a couple of days ago, and over a year for industries like lightning or lighting or um, decorating painting, you can see that, well, across all of them, we have double digit increases. So we have a lot more searches happening, a lot more interest online by the same number of people that were searching in 2012. So we still have 90%, but a lot more engaged and passionate uh, group. Now, these queries, obviously there's a lot more demand. People know that they can find information online, so they go online and they keep hitting and trying to find as much information as possible. This obviously results in a lot more traffic on your websites. So, and this is even higher. So if there are businesses that have identified the potential out there, the, the higher demand online, and they started either advertising or um, putting, let's say, a better website out there, improving their website, improving their rankings, started showing on the first page. And this is when we started, um, this, is, uh, this is how we see these massive increases happening year on year in the amount of visits, because obviously a click, you have, you have here a click. A click means a visit to the website. And this is what we see. So this is something that we saw while we were doing the survey. From 2012 to 2014, within two years, the traffic to the websites almost, well, doubled actually. So within two years, the traffic that we saw coming from search to um, the websites doubled. Again, a more engaged user, a user that is a lot more curious and a lot more, uh, a lot more powerful at the same time. Um, they, are, they want quick information, they, they, they have the opportunity to learn a lot and get informed. And unfortunately, sometimes um, that leads to the, the, the point where they're not that loyal. So before we would have a um, we would have a user that would let's say if, if you want to buy something you would go straight uh, into the retailer or the wholesale that the wholesaler that you used you were using before or your father used to use or your friend <coughs> you would ask for information but because of this price battle out there and the information that you can find and the opportunity to sell to someone that is not based in Leeds and is based miles away but you can still ship something that gives you um, that gives every business a lower opportunity. So the question that comes here is, now that we have a lot more people coming to your website, is your website good enough to keep these people? Because consumers have this, it's a consumer behavior, right? Consumers have so much information in their hands, it's very easy for them to swap uh, and move across pages and um, look for better prices, different features. A, a business that is closer to them, if, if they need it urgently and they can go and pick it up. Before they wouldn't necessarily have this information, at least not within an hour or two. Now it is available. So now is now more than ever. It's critical. What like your page design, your website design is a lot more critical than ever. You need because we have this lower brand loyalty. We need to make sure that we capture the user and we hold them, we hold them with us, <coughs> and um, keep engaging with us. Sixty-one percent. Um, that's a different survey, which is more recent. It's actually uh, no. It's no more recent, but it's, it's the same number that is uh, active now as well. 61% of uh, consumers said that they would leave a website if they did not find the information right away. And I think we can all relate to that. Like, if you're looking for something and you can't find it on the, let's say if you see a listing that says, uh, I don't know, car tools from X price, and you hit in there and you land in a page that has bulbs, obviously that's not um, something that you're interested in. So you're like, okay, let's move and go to another one. So 61% would leave it. What is interesting is that for users that were searching on mobile, which is a lot more, it's happening a lot more now, 50% of them would quickly bounce out if the web, if, if they see that the page is too uh, heavy and they have to pitch in and out. So make your, if, if you have to pick your battles and start online and decide what to do first, number one priority is fix your website. Make sure that you have a very simple website where everyone can find the information that they want quite quickly and without pinching it out. So I already mentioned this, 
but uh, I like this graph, it's very uh, powerful. Um, B2B research is self-directed. So as we said, consumers have loads of, um, or business, let's say B2B uh, purchases, have loads of information in their hand. So they're pretty much, they can do majority of the search without even reaching out to business. So when we were on the survey, we found out that 57% of the whole pre-research is happening already without even reaching out to the business. So they would do their research, they would, they would check the competition and the features, and um, they would see review videos before even calling uh, the business to ask for. Again, throughout the survey, you would, you would so while we are still on the website um, and how important our online presence is, let's see uh, how that has an impact across all the devices at this time. So during the survey, we found that of these users here that are, you can see mobile already there, 82% of the searches happen across different devices. Only 18% ha happen on one screen, and that was our detector for uh, mobile. The rest, the, 82, the, the rest of, the, of um, the people in the panel use different devices throughout the journey. So like throughout this 12 um, different searches and engagements, they were using different screens. Now, question for you. Do you know, or can you guess actually, you wouldn't know, but, um, because the first question that I usually get from um, our from businesses like yours, like from B2B businesses is, is mobile really the, the, the source for me? Um, the, the source of clients, are the, the mobile users really engaged and would they be as valuable customers as um, a desktop user would be or someone that has been in my business already? So this, this um, here's the question. So how many of the B2B searches are happening on mobile? Give a guess. Yeah, it's very interesting what you say there because, again, throughout the survey, they, they checked also demographics. So when they started in 2012, um, the, for the age group, uh, 30 to 45 percent, only about 25 percent was making a B2B purchase decision. So the younger the, the younger generation wouldn't wouldn't let's say buy high value products. They would be more on the retail side. In 2014, when the survey ended, that jumped up to 40 percent. So from 25 to 40 percent, and that starts showing us where we need to go in order to follow our consumers, our potential customers. Because if you think about the, if you think about it, 30 to 45 years old, they, or 18 actually to 35, and then 30 to 40, they are the, we are the generation that actually grew up in digital. So we 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 had email since we were in, in school. So for us, it's easy. The first the, our first choice would be digital, wouldn't be print, wouldn't be radio, or um, again, trade shows would be, but we would first do, do a research online. So how do we adjust our strategy in order to reach this um, this new age group that makes the decisions for, for B2B pages? So across all age groups, this is 42%. So you would think 42% is not that high. Like, we are lower on money. Why is it only 42%? So it is a very small group, but as I said earlier, it is a very engaged group, a very passionate group. So out of this 42% of um, B2B searches that are happening online, within two years, we saw a three, three times increase, three times growth in these searches. So they are a small group, but they are a very passionate group. They are a group that is, um, it is very engaged and they do all their research online before, before calling a business. So again, it is critical to have a website, but do you like? I guess it's a question that you need to ask yourself: Do you still have a website that's best known, or do you even have a website? Are you thinking of making a website? What do you want to promote in there? A website can be costly, but then you need to pick your battle and decide: If I want to sell this product now, this is what needs to be on my page. Like follow the growth that is happening organically in the market because of the decision makers and the purchase path, and adjust your strategy. So. Again, purchases would go online and check, like on, on the mobile, they would check 
prices, features, product info, only about 25% would contact from their mobile phone. You would think it's low, but it's actually about 150% higher than what it was in 2012. Because now it's even more, because we have, um, you have so many more features where you can call the business directly. Um, you, you can find what you need, um, you can just call them directly and ask for availability. It's as simple as that. Stay, users stay connected, stay, stay connected, and if you, again, when we were looking in the, um, in the demographics there, on who's making the decision and who's responsible to, to make a decision for a higher value purchase, the, um, what was very interesting was that actually the ones that make the decisions are usually on, on, on the road. They wouldn't stay in an office. I mean, you know it. Your business, uh, you have your, your businesses, and you hardly, I guess, stay in, in one place. You have to to meet with customers. You have to do, to, to meet with suppliers or reach out for new business. So on the go, it's a lot. Now that you have the opportunity to search on the go, you see that a lot of, um, um, the, let's say, the C levels that would make a decision would um, search a lot online, and this is the first place where they would start. About 75% of, of um, uh, B2B purchases start with a generic term. They wouldn't go straight away, I know exactly what I want. They would go with a generic term, let's say the bigger, just to give me an example. Uh, hmm? Exactly, because we don't have brand loyalty. So you would go with, um, you wouldn't even know, some, some, some of them wouldn't even know exactly the model that they want. So they would start with a generic search and the closer they would go to the 12th engagement they would get to, they would have filtered out websites that are not good enough, businesses that are too, like products that are too expensive, or even if they have already called them and they are not happy with the, uh, with interaction there, they would just take it out of their uh, uh, equation. So staying on mobile, you remember we, we, we talked about this 12 um, uh, searches before at the first round engagement. What is interesting is that for mobile, this engagement happens a lot faster. The engagement and the brand decision happens on the seventh, um, uh, let's say, search. And the reason why this happens is because it's a lot easier on mobile to filter out. Because, let's face it, especially for B2B, website quality is not very good at that. Because it's the last industry where the online work really went in and, and started changing it. So we, ha we, ha we still have a lot of websites that are, are not very responsive or not mobile friendly. So for a user that is on mobile, it's a lot easier to, to drop out and, and pick what, what they want to work on on, the, on a lot earlier stage. So a big difference there. And then when we asked people, how do you, what do you dislike the most when browsing the web on your mobile device? It was waiting to slow pace to load. And I mean, for, for uh, all of us that are online, we, we, we have paces. We, we experience this many times. So I guess the question that um, I would ask you there is, do you still have a slow website? Do you still have, um, um, do you not have a website? Do you still um, have a website that is not uh, clear for the user to find exactly what they want? If this is the case, start with that. Start prioritizing it, because the faster you enter this market, the better it is, the better it is. When we saw earlier the percentage of the increases uh, year on year, you could see we're still in double digits. But in a year from now, that might obviously drop because there will be a lot more advertisers out there for a lot more businesses. So something that you can test already while you're sitting here, if, if obviously you have a, a device that can do it, or test it after, just put your website on Test My Site. Test My Site is um, a free tool um, delivered by Google where you can put your site and it will give you straight away your speed and also um, any recommendations that you would need um, to talk to your webmaster to fix it. <coughs> any questions you've asked so far? Or the So many websites are becoming more mobile friendly. Yeah. If you go back, say, just five years, the yeah. majority of websites you couldn't use on a mobile because yeah. you say too much data, too much information. Now, it's that, is that going ahead of the trend for more mobile search? Or is that as a result of? I think it's more.
a result of it. I see more like the, the fact that more businesses start having mobile sites is a result of the need for mobile for, for mobile presence because of all these boundaries that we see and this the, the very low brand loyalty and engagement. So it is more a result. But then, to your point, then competition impacts the rest. So if if the competition is already having very strong mobile presence, then the others have to follow. So in this case, it's a result. Let's say. Also, it's sort of filtering back onto that. Exactly. Of how use the but, but that's it. Like technology keeps changing, and the question is because we see it changing now, and we have the same way that the purchasers have uh, all this uh, buying power and the research power. The same way we can see a lot easier what's coming in the next six to to eighteen months. Not further because you never know. We, we might have drones here presenting instead of me. But like this, is, this is where you can. Yes, how quickly a business is reacting to. Feedback uh, on connectivity of their websites. A, a business owner, like how you mean, how, how quickly they would change the website? Yeah, or you know, how, you quite know, slow. It's, it's quite slow. It is quite slow actually. For <coughs> uh, for B two B industry, it's quite slow because the products are very complex or a lot more complex than buying a T shirt. I, I don't understand your industry. I, uh, I I hope I could. I mean, the very simple one I understand, but obviously nowhere near what you guys know about your own business. Um, so the nature of the product, which means that the websites by default need to be a little bit more complex because all the different models and the different, um, uh, let's say, features that are out there. And also, it's never a priority because traditionally, excuse me, traditionally it has been a business that works on, uh, based on word of mouth. We would go with um, the friend of a friend, the recommendations that you have there. It's more because of the price. Um, um, that is let's say the price comparison that is available out there that people start moving faster, or the fact that it's a lot easier to ship now or so much quicker. So if a new business came to you now and said, I need to I need to design a new website for you to go online. What's different in the advice you give them now when they design the website that you want five years ago? So five years ago would be put as much information as you can, make your website heavy, and give all the information that you can to the user there, straight away. Because in a way, they wouldn't buy online. They might, it, it was more of a proof that you're a healthy business, rather than a way to find customers. It was an advertising it was, it was, but sort of offline advertising. It was online, but offline at the same time. So it was more like, oh, you can check us online. It was a pride of every business, because it was very new. To, to be like, oh, there you go, I have an amazing website, and you can check all this, like, yeah, you're in my store now, but you can also go home and check online and see all this information. It was more like, let's say, um, a credit, as it would give credibility to the business. So it wasn't used as a lead generation activity. But now, the biggest difference is that, the biggest difference that I see is that we use websites to generate leads for your business, to, to get reach to, to customers that you wouldn't find otherwise. Like, you would usually work with very local or again, but you wouldn't find someone that is, let's say, in London coming to buy from your business that is in Leeds. It would be quite tough. Um, so the, the new websites are a lot less So the less new complex. website has to be simpler to, sorry? It's a lot less complex. Exactly. So the new, the, the new website has to be mobile friendly, a page that moves very quickly. So when I, um, and let's say, the, the, the webmaster would give you more information, but um, when your listing shows either it's an ad or an organic server, an organic result, when your listing shows a product because of a tag that you have on your website, that should lead straight in. So the categorization of the website should be lean so that it's easy for the advertiser to find it. Should be simple and should have call, of act, uh, call to action, 100%. So you should use your mobile site, not necessarily for someone to buy straight away, because the, the, the industry is quite complex. You wouldn't, it's not, sometimes the product is quite expensive as well. So you wouldn't buy straight away online on your phone, right? You would do a little bit more research. That's why you should have your number straight away on, on every single page of the website. Um, find find out more information. Or some like some businesses have a call center. Like a call center could be two or three uh, people out there. Or it could be uh, that they can offer chat support. I've, we've seen some bigger companies doing it. But then the faster you get there, like if you're one of the first ones to offer chat support, if I'm on my mobile and I'm just checking something and I, I want the availability, 
I might have a discussion and I don't want necessarily to pick up the phone. I might just chat to you and say, um, hello, I'm interested in this. Do you have a link I can come and pick it up? It's a lot more, um, so let's say it's based a lot more on the user rather than the product. That's that's the difference in the website of five years ago and the website here. Uh, so it's about the user friendliness, it's about them being able to contact you. Yes, Very simply. Uh, that would be the simplest. The simplest. Um, the first advice that we give is make sure that your phone or whichever way you want to be contacted, right? If you, if you want people to drop by your shop, then you need to focus more on local. So you need to make sure that your website, your actually your maps and your GMB, your Google My Business, um, so your, your spot on the map, let's say, is um, uh, accurate and they can find you very easily. You have your address showing is an extension throughout, like in either organic or other results. So if you want to bring footfall into your business, then you need to focus, your website should try should be focused on location, like let's say a hardware store near me, the, 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 all the searches is near me. But if you want people to, to call to get a quote, then the phone number should be a quote. Well, or even they get a quote. Well, you have to, uh, one of the most things that you need to do is if you have an existing uh, site, it has to be rejigged to be compatible with a phone. So it's a different type of site altogether. So yes, and this is the biggest challenge that we have in B2B from a very heavy website, how do we move it there? And I know that all the business, every B2B business that we're talking to, this is the first thing that they say, and it's very expensive most of the time to convert everything. That's why what we often suggest is, why don't you, again, use it as a lead generation and have, it have a mobile friendly landing page, only one landing page that would sit on your website. So the main landing page would be um, mobile friendly and then advise people to either visit your website or just give you a call. If your website is not mobile friendly, target the mobile users with a call. So ask them to, to call you and find out more rather than going into there. Um, I understand the, the concern because it is uh, quite complex to change it, but we will have to do it. Especially now, um, last week, Google announced that they had started doing tests on uh, having prioritizing mobile first uh, websites on their ranking, both ad and organic. So um, it's not clear yet what is going to come out, but um, you might have seen some some of the listings that's having the A and P symbol next to it, which is a cached version of a website. So they, we are trying already. We are preparing the user. We give the user a faster first page, and then um, they can take longer to, to look into more products. So we. We're moving a lot faster than we thought towards the mobile world. Um, and if this change with the uh, mobile first is actually implemented in 2015, then ideally you should start moving towards like creating a mobile page now, not yesterday. Because um, we have a very uh, aggressive goal. And some of Google presentations that say, that say go mobile in 2016 or go home in 2017, it's very aggressive. I wouldn't. I wouldn't. Uh, I don't quote it. I don't. I don't agree with it. But it's based on numbers. It makes pretty much a statement, a very, very strong statement on what's happened and how ready we need to be. So if it goes that way and your site is not mobile friendly, you're not going to go up in search. It's going to get you, a long you way would, down. You would still come up, yeah. but businesses that offer the user, because it's always like search is the main mission. Let's say that we have when it comes to organic search results is always to give the user the best information available in the fastest way possible. So when we see that um, users would bounce out if the page doesn't load within three seconds, three seconds, like you click on it, if it doesn't load within three seconds, it will bounce out. Um, uh, like in some cases, it's five seconds, but still even five seconds, we have pay, uh, websites now that would load in 10 and 12 and 15, especially if the website is um, busy. So if we don't move towards that, then, um, First of all, we're not offering the, the, the user the right experience. And also, you are not necessarily helping the business itself. Because in some cases where you have ads and you have a not fast moving website, you will still be charged for it, but the customer would go out. The, the, the potential consumer would jump out. So technically, we're not helping you, and you're not going to see results of your advertising campaign, which you're investing money in. So it's more like following the, the, what the consumers want. It's again the cause and effect thing. Yeah. I don't know what came first. Um, is that a reflection of human behavior in the modern age? Then, Sorry, yeah. is that a reflection of, of human behavior in the modern age where we are less, people have less patience because?
because we expect things 100%. more instantly. 100%. It's, it's, we are sort of spoiled as well. Like We are spoiled of having this accessibility and this super quick information in our hands. Um, so yes, it so is. So a quick six for it. asking 
Uh, uh, well, I don't go on social media. I don't. I don't have a. Um, I don't have a phone that does that. It's, it's okay. not my generation. It it really depends on um, who your buyers are. You know your so business. So who you're targeting. You know your business more than anyone else. Um, each one of you knows your business better than than the person next to you. So if you if you know that the business that you're targeting, the, 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 sorry, the, the target um, audience of yours is um, the older generation that they don't feel really comfortable with using their mobile or checking YouTube videos, um, then you can sort of like just invest in having a quick moving website, or again having your phone number and your map location correct. So then numbers go, and we see that people that are making decisions now are the younger generation. So we, we are in this, um, we pass into this new era where whoever makes decisions in a business, like I don't know uh, how many people you will employ for your business, but um, I guess it's not, they are not all over 40. So you will have young, uh, young people as well working for you and they will be a lot more into the social media or this is what I found, there are offers there, you know, like they, they bring new offers to you or uh, new customers. So yes, it might not be for every business, you know your target audience better, it might not be priority for every single one of you to go on mobile now, but it will be in six months, no doubt. It will be because, oh, sorry, you have well, No, I was um, thinking about it for later, but Instagram and Snapchat, what the impact's going to be there, because I don't even know what those are, but millennials will be the next buyers, won't they? And they're all over it. So yeah, it's probably not, I'm using Instagram a lot, uh, uh, and I actually use it for shopping. It's very, Instagram is very powerful for retail at the moment. Um, it's growing a lot, same as Facebook. They're growing a lot for, for the retail business. The, the products that are not as expensive um, and people would be more like, while they're chilling on the sofa, checking social media, they would, um, they would get an idea, oh, let's get this jacket. But for B2B businesses, we don't see it happening yet because usually B2B purchases are, are a lot more, they would do their searches more during the day. They would be, it would be part of the business rather than part of their free time. So we don't see it as fast. We don't see it happening as fast. But again, with Facebook pages, I, I don't know Facebook very well, to be honest, so I can't, I can't comment on this. But um, everywhere you can improve your presence, do it as, as the, the minute you get, a, the time you get a minute to start investing in this, just don't postpone it, because it's moving a lot faster than, than it should be. But yeah, I don't know if I answer your question, but B2B um, is a lot slower in social media than um, other industries, but it's definitely getting there. Like, again, four years ago, five years ago, we wouldn't think that you have to have a mobile site because someone would look for, uh, like, paint on the mobile phone. But it happens, it's, it, it is there. Like, we saw the searches or bulbs online or um, all the electrical, so they have been growing 43%. The, the visits on the website have grown 43% year on year, which is massive. So it is there. Yeah, so social media, like the likes of Facebook, is it's, I think it's more about it's the end user, it's not business to business, it's the final Exactly. Place, because they've got it's a lot more B2C. People, they all stick together because they, you're not going to be friends with somebody on Facebook whose opinions you don't like. So you choose people who've got like minded opinions, probably like minded yeah. people, you end up liking the same pages and so on. It's like a self perpetuated. Yeah, it's business, not it, business to business. Because it's, more, it's more B2C, business. exactly. It's more business to customer. Yeah. It's a more direct response because people spent. You wouldn't go on Facebook, uh, let's say you would go on Facebook and you, you, you want to take your head off something like, when I mean, you want to procrastinate a little bit, you'd be like, I can't really deal with this complex task. Let's just go on Facebook and, and have a look, like, have a browse. It's nice so if, for suppliers, got the lovely Facebook page, but I'm not going to go on their site to do business. Yeah, like we, we see this happening, right? Um, again, this is what we see now, but then a year from now, it might be a completely different story. And you have Facebook investing a lot more in B2B and growing this channel. Um, Google by default since the beginning because they start from the user and um, what the, 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 let's say the behavior, the, the, the user behavior is. Um, since the beginning it had a lot more focus on product and B2B rather than B2C. So it, it was a lot easier to transition there. Um, Has that line between B2C and B2B grayed out a bit though because everyone's a customer and we're in relationship management and so Facebook and Insta and Snapchat, they're still just extensions of that relationship. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, you, you raised a really good point there. 
Um, the latest, um, let's say, B2B workshop that we had was don't treat your B2B customers uh, much different from your B2C customers. Because technically, as you said, it's just an extension of it. So to your point, I agree with you. It is an extension of it, and it is getting there. And that comes after the availability of information that we have. So because we are all connected and we have access to so much information, a business becomes a customer because they don't have to be as loyal. So business, like what we think of a business is when we do business to business job uh, for a work is always like, yeah, you're my supplier, so I would always trust you because we have this 15 years relationship and we would never break it. It's not really the case anymore. Like it's still happening, but it is transitioning into more like, let me check this and this and this and see all my different options, which is more of a consumer behavior rather than a business behavior. So it is grayed out. Like it started getting there. Um, so, like, I saw a very recent case study from Sprint. I don't know, Sprint, do you know Sprint, the American? Um, it's like a, a three um, mobile company in America, anyways. It, it's very big, and they big promote the, the, the promotion recently was instead of making a, a business for uh, instead of making an ad showing the packages for businesses, all they did is a people's ad. So they just. Uh, Started. This is the, the ad was like this is Jane. It works on blah blah blah. This is Mark, and you know they they all think that the boss was talking in the ad. Um, they all think that I'm the boss, but actually, they I work for them. They don't work for me, and they were trying to build this more personable, um, um, pretty much image rather than like we are a business. You are a business. Let's work together. It was more like there is a person in our business that can work with the person in your business, which is more bit to say. And this is. Underline now on, on certain platforms with the mannequin challenge, isn't it? Because the mannequin challenge is showing behind the scenes in offices and seeing what every function, every function that every employee is doing. It gives you a little insight, a little taste yeah. into what your business to business relationship yeah. is. Because everyone is looking to, to build a new relationship. You don't have the brand loyalty, so you're looking into building a new relationship. So, like spending more, let's say, exposing more what's happening in your business internally, like people's wise, uh, it, it seems like it's working. I don't know if it's, um, I would say it, it works for the big companies because everyone has them in, in their mind like, oh, they are just like this conglomerates. They, they will never understand the end user. That's why they want to put this people's uh, thing out there. I think for smaller businesses, we already have it. Like you know who are your suppliers, you know who are your biggest customers. So the, the personal relationship is already there. Yes. Yeah. It, it sort of is because what I have on my phone is very personal to me, but you could we, you could be checking the same website with me, but in a different way. But like, this is like the, the lack of loyalty. I mean, I, I call it the Aldi effect. It's where people are yeah. realizing you don't need it. The Aldi effect. There's yeah. other ways of finding that that is a problem, but it's it's there as a whole. It's a fairly faceless. It is yeah. scanning that that you said mannequin challenge. So it's it's bringing that personal touch back in. Yeah. Still, yeah. Correct. Correct. Yeah. So, again, all of it leads to build your brand or your, your your presence online and build it carefully. The faster you start, the better it is. Uh, again, so many so many different channels uh, ch channels where you can um, uh, promote your business. Just start as soon as possible. And do you have more questions? How do you deal with what seems to be rapid increase in the amount of negativity that there is on these set. People trolling and you know, bad reviews and people just who are angry. It does seem like there are more yeah. they're getting more and more angry people are getting access to the yeah. internet and starting to understand that they can put their opinion in there. And how exactly. do you find people are getting around dealing with that? So for the users it's great, right? And for the good and healthy business out there it's also great. You will always have the, the odd case of someone just being a mean person by default and just go out there and put a bad review because it doesn't like you, because the issue doesn't like you. But the, if you think about it, it's so powerful that the users have this option. Hmm? You can use it as well. See, that one is, is you can use it back, because you can deal with them. And exactly, and you can address and get the customer back. If complete publicity, then you're going to deal with it. Yeah. Reviews are so strong, especially for B2B. Reviews are, like, for, I think it's number three in the searches. So they would start with um, search, and they would like generic search, 
then customers would go to the specific website that they already knew, probably more, like especially if they've been in the business for a while, they know where to search. And then the last bit would be reviews. So I have a YouTube or a review site where they can go and check specifically uh, what's happening for the bit, uh, how good they've been, the, the ser example service that they've been using, <coughs> or the delivery, or um, the quality of the product. That they've been. So I, I personally think that this is the, the one of the most valuable, um, let's say, the, the, one of the biggest values of this evolution, that we can actually have access to this information, we can prevent from having a bad experience, or we can save money sometimes, we can, um, um, and help businesses that before, like smaller businesses, that before wouldn't have um, the voice out there, um, because bigger businesses would be out and capture everything and be the big brand that everyone would trust. Whereas then, like I often trust smaller businesses because I would see, I would check the, the reviews and be like, oh, very personable service, friendly, uh, you can find everything you want, or little gems that you wouldn't think about. All these comments that are out there, you would definitely go for it, even if it's even if it's not 100% accurate most of the time, but it's definitely worth it. So yeah, review sites as well. It's another point here where uh, you can invest more. It's great. Um, Got small building company. Mm -hmm. um, you sort of, you sort of on the treadmill. You know, so job to do today, job, loads of work to do before Christmas. So, so I don't have the time. Oh, probably the interest yeah. to, to get into this sort of thing. But if you, I, I, don't, I don't have a website. Obviously, I've got. How would if you and me start from scratch? What do I do first? How do I start? I would start with this Google My Business, yeah. which is free. Sorry, you no, want to finish I've, your question? Yeah, well, we've got a general building company. We want to do some specific things, mm -hmm. that, like specialist things. And we want to, but the reason why I did it is I want to start start and try and market that online. I don't know anything. I, I don't know where to start. Yeah. I mean, I get, we all get tech things on our phone, texts and emails, sign up for star websites and, and you don't you, you, you know, no, like you don't want to yeah. be one of them yeah, yeah so if you mean where, where would you start if you don't have a website i would definitely start from google my business so google my business is a free tool all you have to do is um sign up and you put your business on the map first first thing and then you have a little listing so if someone is looking for a building company in leeds or a building company Usually they wouldn't look for near me for this type of searches, but you would know. Um, you would show up, and then ideally invest in a in a in a mobile landing page. You don't need again. You don't need to build a really big website. You can get a mobile landing page now quite cheap uh, these days, and it will literally be just a lead gen for you. A few like a lean page with um, let's say a couple of videos of what you've done a before and after. Like it's or a couple of pictures before and after of what you like if you do renovations or um, anything that shows your work and then a lot of um, like call to action like your mobile number. So the easiest way to start is Google My Business and Maps, where you can have uh, obviously all your contact information and you can also have images now, so you can show um, you can do the same there. But it's not as powerful as having a website where it would be um, more uh, let's say create more engagement. With but as a first step, Google My Business. If it's still hard, and you, I completely understand you wouldn't have the time, like, I w if, I, if I had to start advertising my own business now, and I'm, I'm nowhere near how busy it is near as you are, I wouldn't have the time to do it. Because we all get into this daily thing, and we, you have, like, day in, day out, you have a core job if you, uh, if you have a main job, etc. Yeah. So don't be afraid of, like, either reaching out to Google directly or reach out. The guys here are actually from um, a digital marketing agency, so they are working with businesses like yours. So if you want to get their advice, don't don't be afraid of like reaching out to them. It's free to get a quote, so why not to, to talk to them? Because it can be it can be quite stressful. What sort of things can you do for? Um, you mean um, to help your site or to help your situation? So we don't have a website solution. So Google doesn't have a website solution right now. The, the closest to that is. Google My Business, where you get a listing but not a website. Uh, so you have a it's sort of a listing but by Google, so it's more on the front and more on the um, 
but then if you decide to advertise for every new advertiser, Google is given um, that 75 pounds voucher. So you spend 25 on your advertising and we do much, 70, well, we don't match actually, we give you 75 back. And this is more we give for the first couple of weeks of your of your advertising, so that you pretty much test it for free. Just like test it for free. So that's the, that's the support that you're getting as a new advertiser. If you decide to advertise, you get um, some free credit. And then um, if you need support for Google My Business, or if there's no direct line you can call, but there's plenty of videos out there you can do, you can find out. Um, YouTube is a channel that we use a lot, obviously, so you can go there and just follow the steps on a YouTube video and do it yourself. It's quite, quite simple, actually. Um, yeah, there's a lot of online information in terms of face-to-face -face interaction. We, Google doesn't do much. That's why we partner with people that can do it. So if you want a more personable um, face-to-face um, uh, let's say consultation with someone that has been doing this for a while, probably a partner of ours would be a lot more uh, suitable for this case. But yeah, the, the offer is, is there, the 2575 is always there throughout the year. So you can always get That Google My Business, is, is that where you get, if you're searching for something like, you get a list of, and some of them have a website, so like the name of the company. Yes. Because Google will already know that you're So it used to be places before, or maps, and like places. Now it's called Google My Business because you can add photos, you can have a lot more, you can you can have a lot more enhanced listing than before. But yeah, it's it's the free part of it. Um, it's there's no charge, there is no, and it's actually quite easy to, to do it, and quite easy to verify it as well. Before it was quite tough with fees, and now it's a lot easier. So have a look out there, and if it's I would say start. Um, I mean, the guys are here, and you will. I'm pretty sure you will be. Either you have been approached already by someone that, excuse me, has already um, proposed, uh, suggested to you that you start advertising online, or you might meet someone uh, in the trade show later that have been doing this uh, this um, this job. So ask them, ask their advice, and give it a shot on your own. Or if you have kids that are um, um, or uh, friends that are happy to, to to try it for you, try it. Um, just be careful not to get disappointed because it is very it is very complex and if you don't do it right it could be a waste of money as well like everything right you might you might start on your own let's say advertise and put you know put 10 pounds a day in there to, to advertise and then get no business out of it and the reason behind it would be that you have a very wrong targeting or really wrong keywords or just targeting, I don't know, London, whereas you're in Leeds. You never know. It's a lot of settings in there. It can be very confusing. So be patient um, when you when you start the process, and be careful um, where you put your money in because it's very easy. I've, I've talked to so many customers. I used to to, to work actually in the customer support uh, when I started with Google. So my main job was to listen to complaints of people that were desperate. Like I want to promote my business, but I don't know how. And I started, and I just spent hundred pounds, and I, I didn't get a phone call. And it is frustrating, so make sure that um, you, you're patient at the beginning until the time is settled and you make careful steps before just putting money out there and getting disappointed. That would be my little advice on that. So you have to engage your audience. Okay, I'll close with another video, um, which is actually a B2B business, but um, never, um, weren't doing much on advertising before, and someone reached out to them, and they started advertising. They, they're describing their experience. Window treatments are a really integral part of the home. They're essentially like a big painting on your wall. Something that's a reflection of you. At Ruby Blinds, we build a very custom window treatment for your windows. In the past, we were never able to meet by the consumer
So yeah, that's a big thing that is using, uh, it's focusing more on phones, as I said earlier. So they, they, what they wanted was not necessarily people to go online because, because of the nature of the business, they had to customize to go and meet the customer, but they wanted to get leads in. And the best way to get leads was with a call campaign, as I said earlier, click to call. So you can see it's an ad people would call and get their customizer and get a, get a quote. And it was hard for them at the beginning as well because they would be like, why should I invest my money in something that, uh, why would someone trust and call my business instead uh, rather than someone else? Uh, but obviously the results are already there. Their call center is growing and uh, they are, uh, it, it, it is the biggest part of their advertising moment. And it's a B2B business. It's, um, it, it used to be a B2B business and now it's moving into B2C as well because uh, a lot more people would, would ask for, for a customized one. So yeah. That's it, that's it for me. Uh, if you have any more questions, I will be around. Uh, or you can just ask them now if you want. Uh, otherwise, um, good luck with uh, your, um, with like while building this, this mobile, pr with this online presence. Uh, again, it's not easy, be patient and be careful on your next steps, but make sure that you make the steps. Uh, every start is difficult, but then it will definitely pay, um, pay back and you will see the return on, in, on the investment. Um, simply, we have so many other business and examples that tried it before. So, go for it and um, explore as many opportunities that are out there as possible, either through Google or partners or a friend of yours that might know how to do it. Yeah, that's it. Thank you. Thanks for your attention. Thank you. And